Welcome to Political Beatdown. First and foremost, I want to wish everybody a happy new year. We are thrilled to be here with you in 2024. And folks, we've got momentum. Here's what we're going to talk about on today's show. A disastrous, weird, miserable Donald Trump New Year's party, if you even want to call it that foreshadowing the year that Trump is about to have. We'll get into that. Where is Melania still MIA? Also a photo of Donald Trump uh, with someone who we haven't really seen or talked much about at this New Year's party is bringing to surface just how creepy Donald Trump has always been throughout his entire life. And, uh, some new things that I think are going to be surfacing over the next couple of days and weeks. We'll get into that. Also, the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeal issued a directive to the parties on Donald Trump's appeal on the issue of absolute presidential immunity. Be prepared to address what has been filed in these two very significant amicus briefs that we've been covering on the Midas Touch Network and Legal AF. And one of these amicus briefs uh, argues that the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals shouldn't even have jurisdiction at this stage, and this should go to an immediate trial before the district court, Judge Tanya Chutkin. Also, you've got President Biden starting out the new year with momentum, with the stock market, the economy all trending in a positive direction and Donald Trump trying to take credit for that. Let's get into that. Let's get into more. This is Political Beatdown and uh, Michael Cohen, 2024. It's here, man. It's here. Roll up your sleeves. Yeah, it's, it, 2024 hasn't started so great for, um, for me or for many of the brigaders here uh, who have been, of course, following uh, my action against the United States government based upon Trump and Barr and the DOJ, the Bureau of Prison, and a whole slew of people's uh, unconstitutional remand of me back to prison because I refused to waive my First Amendment constitutional right. In fact, there's one article um, that actually tells the story accurately, which is so hard today to get. I am so down, and it's only the second day of January of 2024. I'm so down by the media because, once again, they don't seem to understand that the more misinformation that they continue to promote, the worse it's going to be for the rest of us, down the down the road especially. You know, I talk about, and it's, it's the raw story, um, which you could find. It's written by Sarah Burris, that one. Michael Cohen sounds the alarm after court denies the appeal. No, right? <laughs> it's, I mean, you just can't make this sort of shit up anymore. Uh, no Trump foe is safe. And how, how many times, Ben, have you and I talked to the brigade about what's going to happen if Trump or a Trump 2.0 ends up taking the White House in 2024. What will happen to these critics? And the answer is they can do whatever they want. You know, actually in that story, I specifically put in a quote, which is how many Americans want Donald Trump to have unilateral power to incarcerate a critic? And the answer should be no one. Not Republican, not Democrat, not independent. Nobody should want Donald Trump to have complete unilateral power to incarcerate a critic. We already know what he's going to do to General Mark Milley. We already know what he has said he's going to do to Mike Pence. We already know what he's going to do to the president and CEO of MSNBC. We already know what he's going to do to a whole slew. And when I mean a slew, I'm talking about thousands. Thousands of people will end up getting visited by his brown shirts. They will end up begging, tagging them, incarcerating them, like what Trump likes to talk about, sending them to Guantanamo Bay, to Gitmo, simply because 
he does not like the way that they spoke about him. Well, it's very simple. You don't want people to speak negatively about you. Don't say the stupid shit that you're saying. But no, not if you're Donald Trump. He believes he's entitled to do whatever he wants. And the problem with people like Ron DeSantis is he thinks the same way as Donald Trump does. The only difference is he doesn't have the power. But what happens when they get that power back? What happens to everybody? Where can you go so that you don't have to be in fear for your life and your liberty? And the mistake that's happened here with this second um depart with the second circuit is the fact that their decision doesn't talk about the fact that I was unconstitutionally remanded. What it does is it affirms, which I'm blown away, it affirmed the government's position that the deterrence to stopping a future dictator, a future wannabe from doing this again to you, the deterrence is the fact that I was successful in the writ of habeas corpus to be returned from prison after spending another 16 days in solitary confinement, bringing that to a total of 51. The problem, of course, is that the Supreme Court in the Dobbs decision overturned the Bivens case, despite the fact that Egbert turns around and states, unless it is of the most unusual circumstance. And one of the propositions that was put forth to this three-panel Second Circuit appellate court was, can you possibly name or can you possibly say something which would be more unusual than a president weaponizing the Department of Justice through a willing and complicit attorney general to incarcerate a critic, to violate their First Amendment constitutional right. So I do recommend strongly each and every one of you read the raw story article put out by Sarah Burris. It is absolutely um, accurate. It's factually accurate. And it really tells the story. I will tell you, though, that not stopping here, because as Ben, you and I have talked about in the past, I always knew that this case was going to the Supreme Court. I just would have liked to be going to the Supreme Court where it is the um, government who, what was the name? Oh, um, oh, Allahan or Sha- Shanahan, whatever her name was, for the government who was just horrible. And then Alina Haba, absolutely pathetic, despite the fact that the Second Circuit just granted you know, grant, you know, or denied our appeal. It wasn't based upon them. It was based upon the Supreme Court's decision. So look, I would have liked to have been going to the Supreme Court by government and Haba making the certiorari, uh, the writ of certiorari to the Supreme Court request, as opposed to me, I would have liked to have been on the offense for, you know, for a change as opposed to defense. But Not the way the cookie crumbled. Well, here's the thing. Alina Haba, in her oral argument, tried to argue absolute presidential immunity, which was not the issue actually before the Second Circuit. The Second Circuit then asked Alina Haba a question about the blasting game decision, which states that Trump does not have absolute presidential immunity uh, in context involving election, campaigning, things that fall outside the outer perimeter of uh, Article II authority of the executive branch. She didn't know what blasting game was. The Second Circuit told her to sit down. Michael, I think in full disclosure and me being candid here, you were arguing an exception to what has become many decades of precedent. Bad precedent, but precedent. There was a case in 1971, the Bivens decision, which found an implied cause of action under the Fourth Amendment and Eighth Amendment and other amendments in certain contexts. And that's where the Supreme Court had a different composition. In comes the Federalist Society judges who basically over decades, not just in Dobbs, over decades, failed to recognize any context outside of Bivens involving these uh, FBI agents or involving uh, 
cruelty to the deprivation of a prisoner by not providing medication to a prisoner. And the Supreme Court had held and courts across the country have been holding, I think wrongly, that outside of these very two unique circumstances, that unless Congress passes a law that is not implied from the Constitution, but is a law allowing a right to sue, a specific statute that needs to be passed, the courts have been dismissing these cases for decades. The difference in your case was, does the Michael Cohen case fall in the most unusual circumstance because here, you're the former attorney to a president, they're asking you to sign a like non-disclosure agreement as part of the terms of your early release. They then revoke the terms of your, you know, of, of, of being released from Otisville while you're there. They put you in solitary confinement. So there was really a narrow question was, does this fall in the most unusual circumstances where the Supreme Court has only recognized two other kind of cases ever and have rejected every other instance. And here, the Second Circuit simply held that this is not one of those one in a billion circumstances. Now, that's where I disagree with the Second Circuit. One other point I want to make, though, is that this line of cases, this form of uh, whether there's an implied cause of action or not, this is just involved in civil cases for monetary damages. This is distinct from criminal conduct. What the Second Circuit is not saying, I just want to be clear to our listeners and viewers who, who are looking at this, they're not interpreting criminal law and saying Donald Trump or someone in that position cannot be found criminally responsible if they commit crimes. That's actually in the absolute presidential immunity argument before the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. What this Bivens case from 1971 and then the rejection of Bivens over decades has been about is about civil monetary damages lawsuits against the government where there is not a statute or where there is not some other kind of clear text that would say you have the right to sue and removing this implied cause of action. So I think the Second Circuit got it wrong here ultimately. I do think, Cohen, this is an unusual circumstance that fits within that rarest of rare circumstance, but it's in easy fact, for the, but it's yeah, easy for fact, the Second Circuit is, to oh. say. So, so that's kind of where I net out on this, Cohen. But if you look at the opinion, set aside the raw story, Cohen, if you look at the opinion, when they discuss what went down with you, what happened, I think the Second Circuit pretty much has the facts right about what happened, what Trump did to you, what Bill Barr did to you. But they ultimately say, yes, all of that is true, but there is no civil remedy because what the Supreme Court's done. That's where I disagree, but but that's my own take on it, Cohen. Well, your take is right. I mean, what they were acknowledging is that as a deterrence to a future Fuhrer dictator wannabe, whether it's Trump or a Trump 2.0, is if it happens to be you, something I've been warning everybody about. You know, this has already happened to me. My constant fight is in order to ensure it never happens to another American citizen ever again. It's going to happen to a lot of a lot more people down the road. And so, you know, they the deterrence is not you as now an inmate in a institution filing a writ of habeas corpus citing Michael Cohen versus United States of America in order to be released. That's not a deterrence. That's just that's just a remedy for you to get out, but that is not a deterrence, which is something that Judge um, Barrington Parker had said to government, said to government when slapped himself in the head and said, whoa, 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 what are you talking about? You know, that's not, you know, that's not a deterrence. And so even before that, government wanted to use as a method of deterrence, get a load of this, the Bureau of Prisons administrative remedy process. 
to go from a BP8 to a BP12, it takes like a year and a half. So you're now going to be incarcerated for a long period of time till they get their shit together. It's why I gave this quote uh, to Sarah. It's a terrible, terrible decision. Um, after, of course, the decision was released. This goes well past me. What happens if Trump comes into the White House? What happens if Ron DeSantis or any true 2.0 candidate comes into the White House and they decide they want to lock up Sarah Burris? I was talking to her. Why? Because you wrote something nasty about them. It's something we've seen from the likes of Kim Jong-un or Vladimir Putin or Viktor Orban. I mean, journalists writing for non-state outlets in Russia and Hungary have been targeted or jailed. For example, you have Wall Street reporter Evan Gershkovich. He's been in a Russian prison since March of 2023. I mean, Putin has claimed that he's a spy, that he's not a reporter. And that's when I then went ahead and I also said, how many Americans want Donald Trump to have the power to unilaterally incarcerate a critic? And the answer should be no one. But that's not what we're going through. There's a whole group of people still right now who think that I deserved to be unconstitutionally remanded back to Otisville. And not because they know the facts, as you've described them accurately, Ben, or as Sarah Burris in her article accurately describes. They want me there because I am a critic of Donald Trump, because I don't ascribe to the racist, sexist, misogynistic, xenophobic, homophobic, Islamophobic, anti-Semitic rhetoric that keeps coming out of his campaign and will certainly be a part of his presidency. This is not a joke. It's why every single political beatdown, Ben and I, we, we beg you to please make sure that you are registered to vote. Make sure that your family, your friends, your colleagues, everyone is registered to vote. Because if this guy gets back into the White House, if he does, it's going to be, I don't even know how to describe it. It's going to be chaos all across the board. So under the Bivens doctrine or the dismantling of Bivens, let me give you some examples. So if ICE agents raid a home um, and accidentally start shooting up the home and kill three to five people at, at the home, the family, um, their estate, uh, does not have a civil remedy because Congress has not passed a specific statute that would provide a cause of action against ICE agents in that circumstance. It's the same logic, even if you accept as true everything I said and you accept as true everything in Cohen's uh, factual scenario that led to his unlawful remand, there would be no civil damages remedy against those ICE agents. And, and then I could make it more personal to somebody you know. What if they were going to raid a home and they thought it was uh, individuals on some on some list that they were investigating, but got the wrong home. And they went into your home or one of your friends' home and did the same thing. Again, there would be no civil remedy. Now, if there was criminal conduct, the officers can be looked into. That's not immunizing the officers who engage in crimes. But on these issues of violations of civil rights, against federal officers and federal agents for civil damages unless there are specific statutes that create exceptions uh, like Bivens, then you're out of luck. And that's, to me, very problematic law. And that law has been created by this federalist society logic or illogic that really Congress needs to pass these things. And unless there's a specific statute, we, the judiciary, shouldn't, shouldn't find remedies for people. Whereas when Bivens was decided in the 70s, it was actually a more enlightened time for the judiciary that says, if people's rights get violated, they need courts. <laughs> they need a system. And Congress can't even pass laws to fund the government. You expect Congress is going to pass a, a, a law that actually does something substantive. So that's the I mean, kind should of- Should I then not be entitled to my day in court? Should I not be able to prove the damages that that resulted 
from 16 additional days, making it 51 in total of solitary confinement? Should Donald Trump not be held accountable for the actions that he had, Bill Barr, the Bureau of Prisons, uh, you know, and a whole and the whole slew of people who were named in the complaint? Should they not be held accountable? Really? And and the Second Circuit, based on Supreme Court precedent, and I disagree with this, says Michael Cohen. We accept everything you say as true. The Second Circuit opinion doesn't say Michael Cohen's wrong here or we make a factual finding that this didn't take place. No, the Second Circuit said all of that happened. But if we accept all of that as true, there is no remedy because of how Bivens has been interpreted. But I, I, I want to go into this, Michael Cohen, because we could spend 10 shows talking about that alone. But there is some good news to report as we head into 2024. I think lots of good news heading into 2024. And we can see visually how miserable Donald Trump is. We know that there have been lots of reports that Trump is dreading what the Supreme Court is going to do to him on the various uh, cases. But I want to, you to watch this, Cohen, and I'm sure if you saw this, and one of our researchers found this video from Mar-a-Lago. This is at Donald Trump's New Year's party oh, as, uh, as it was all being kind of counted down into the new year. You see Trump with no smile, no laughter, no joy. No turning to his guests to wish him to wish them a happy new year. No Melania. Here he is at his Mar-a-Lago home. Trump greets 2024 with a frown. Here, play this clip. Very bizarre. Very bizarre. You know, worse than worse than bizarre. I'm disgusted. I, I'm disgusted at the number of people that showed up to Mara Lardo just to be in the presence of this asshole, right? For New Year's. I mean, shame on each and every one of these maggot assholes. I mean, do they not understand? Forgetting about whether you don't like Joe Biden. Forgetting about if even if you hate Joe Biden. Okay. That's your prerogative. But look at the person who you are supporting. You're talking about someone who has committed 91 felonies, 91 charges being brought against him in four separate districts, right? And to four separate cases, possibly soon to be five, with even more counts being brought. And this is who you are supporting? I cannot imagine What's going through these people's heads? They have nothing else to do. There's no other place to go. And you're right. Look how fucking miserable he looks. It's to me, I just don't get it. I don't understand what they're doing. Do they not understand that this man wants to become the next dictator of, of this country? I mean, I, I don't know what they're thinking, and I can never figure out why. I, I can. It, it is a kind of grifter ecosystem of washed up people and losers and really problematic people and and also criminals you know who who kind of form this maga mush and they're all there for their own reasons you've got and these people so these people at Marilardo are not losers i got to be honest with you oh, here's know, a many, photo of uh, alina hobb many of them well alina hobb is just an idiot but oh, pull, you know yeah. But, and, but a lot of the members that are there are mega billionaires. These are, these are decamillionaires, billionaires that are there. And why are they there? What are they doing supporting somebody who legitimately thinks that the biggest win is the Supreme Court overturning Dobbs, which, as you know, affected this Bivens case, but it also affects Roe versus Wade, that their children, their daughters, granddaughters, um, their nieces, right? They all have less rights 
than their than their mothers, their grandmothers. I mean, this is not normal behavior from people who have been so fortunate as to make a ton of money, and they're supporting somebody that when he becomes president, when he would become the Fuhrer, the monarch, he doesn't care about any of these people. They are a means to an end, no different than the person who's sending him $10 a month, the person who he wouldn't shake their hand because their hands are dirty from work. They're no different in his mind. Everybody is second to the king. Some breaking news to report right now. Donald Trump has filed an appeal to the decision by the Maine Secretary of State uh, disqualifying Donald Trump from the Maine primary and general election ballot. That's just coming through the wire right now. We'll report more on that in a little bit when I get to take a look at the appeal that Donald Trump filed there. But look, that Australian billionaire, Anthony yeah. Pratt, he explained why he would go to these Mar-a-Lago events. He would say it was very transactional. It was pay for play. You show up, you give Donald Trump money, he gets you things. Donald Trump would, you know, bring him things that are bad for the American people, but good for the business people who are who are paying. Like top that. secret information, right? Like That's top secret what, documents. Well, you know, Anthony Pratt said that uh, Donald Trump had told him about the nuclear submarine program and how that relates to Australia's defense, which Pratt said he then told uh, Australian former prime ministers and Australian media. So there is a pay for play culture right here. And in, in terms of who are some of the people here, Cohen, I mean, look, here's uh, a photo of uh, Alina Haba and Janine Pirro. They were there really fair and balanced uh, right there. I think we have a group photo too of Alina Haba kind of right behind Donald Trump. No Melania there, but uh, others are there as well. Pull that open in, in, in a minute. That's uh, Donald Trump, not Melania right there, one of the other uh, assistants who works for him. I think there's a group photo where Alina Haba's behind him, which we'll, we'll, we'll pull up in a little bit. Let me just show you this as well. Vanilla Ice, oh, in terms of who's there, you got Vanilla Ice, who, by the way, lives in Florida. I'm not sure you can get anyone cheaper than Vanilla Ice to, to show up. So you've got a washed up rapper at a washed up Mar-a-Lago. And, and this is who's there. It, it's just it's just odd. Watch this. And then you'll see Donald Trump. And notice who's by his side, Michael Cohen. Let's see if you can figure out who it is. Here, play this clip. Yeah, it's a new year. He could yeah, have just the, said the, the right, only stop. one person that's next to him is the guy. Um, what's his name? Who is now being indicted himself? Um, you could zoom oh, in. Yeah. That's yeah, what whatever his whatever his Walteen name is. Nauta, yeah. Donald Nauta. Trump's uh body man, whatever uh whatever that even means. That's uh Walteen Nauta right there, Trump's co-defendant in the Mar-a-Lago documents case before Judge Eileen Cannon. And Cohen, you probably see what he's getting a whiff of right there, being right behind. A, a little, a little right. nut of butter, huh? <laughs> well, your video that uh, well that you did here when we were speaking together has gone wildly viral right here. So I, I want to show this. If this was from our last episode of Political Beatdown, where you were analyzing in in, in jest, but it could be true. But uh, here's. Donald Trump at his speech, because at Donald Trump's speeches, he goes, uh, 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 you know, he does that thing right there. And we've had a lot of people from, you know, Adam Kinzinger on the show um, and lots of other people have been sharing their their stories about just how putrid Donald Trump is. But, but let me play this video of you from the last show. And uh, that's gone crazy viral since then. Here, let's play this clip. Magic and just bad news. Bad things are happening. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It was staring us in the face the whole time, Michael Cohen. It you was understand when he's going like, eh, eh. Donald Von Shits and Pants. That's what he was doing. He was trying to figure out a way how he can sort of squeeze that sucker out, right? And he's going, eh, 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 eh. 
<laughs> it's like, you know, when you were, you see like your baby when they're constipated. That's what Donald's doing. Can we play that again? And I'll show you the exact moment he lets it go. <laughs> Magic and just bad news. Bad things are happening. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Right there. Right there. <laughs> Such a classic. So let's, do, so let's do another one right here, right? So instead of vanilla ice, he should have been like, stop. I got to make a poop, right? Wipe, wipe, baby. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let me see, Ben. Hands up. Wipe, wipe, baby. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's why he was unhappy because I think that's what vanilla ice was singing. For twenty five dollars been in, it, Vanilla ice could have been instructive on – how you are supposed to handle hygiene. And that got Donald Trump a, a, a bit upset. Donald hey, Cohen, do you know this guy here? Donald okay. Trump was taking, a, took photos with, with this guy right here, Paolo Zampoli. Did, 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 in your dealings with Trump, you ever meet this guy? Paolo Zampoli. Here's another photo of him. This is the person who apparently introduced uh, Melania to Donald Trump in the mid 1990s, in 1998. Here's how New York Times described this Paolo Zampoli, who Donald Trump was hanging out with at the New Year's party, uh, that uh, Zampoli ran a modeling agency um, where he would have these foreign models kind of brought into the United States, and then he would host these parties for wealthy businessmen like Donald Trump with these foreign models who would be brought in. Melania was one of the foreign models who started working for uh, Paolo Zampoli, who attended a party uh, that uh, Zampoli would throw for wealthy businessmen with his models at something called the Kit Kat Club in 1998. And so while there was no Melania at Mar-a-Lago at all, same thing, not, not there at Christmas, Donald Trump is spending time with the individual who had made the connection by bringing Melania here to the United States. And there's been just a lot of kind of que questions and red flags raised right there, but um, I'll, I'll leave that to people smarter than me. Did, very bizarre who he's hanging out with. Yeah, I, I mean, I've never, I, I've never spent any time with Zampoli. I've heard the name many, many times. In fact, I even have him as a contact in my uh, cell phone because Donald and I shared all our contacts. I know people who knew him. I've heard many, many stories about him as uh, the owner of a very prestigious modeling agency. Uh, from many, many years ago. But I, I, I'm going to ask Salty to throw that first picture up once again. Did I see that he's an ambassador to the United States? Uh, I'd be very curious to know how that happened. Uh, so I mean, he is... He, so he, he's an ambassador to an island called Dominica. Um, which, by the way, which actually predates Donald Trump and the island of Dominica. It actually has another ambassador because I, I, I got deep down the rabbit hole into, into Dominica. Yeah. But that island you may have heard the name for because there was a bank on Dominica that apparently had ties with Russia that was giving the loan to a Trump media, I think it was about a $6 million loan right. at the key moment where Trump media was, was, was failing. And the loan was set up by that guy, Patrick Orlando, who started mm -hmm. Digital World Acquisition Company. And there was an issue about whether Orlando, because he purportedly earned a commission, whether he disclosed that relationship with the island of Dominica, but there's a lot of connections here and 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 things that deserve more attention, and you we're going to keep. You on know something, Ben? What what always makes me um, curious and and wonder. So you and I have these conversations with our brigaders, and think about the level of grift that's going on here whether it's with this uh, ambassador, don't know if it's true or not. All I know is that the old expression where there's smoke, there's fire. You have 
you know, the the account from Russia that was there that was going for uh, Trump's, uh, you know, uh, media uh, empire when nobody else would loan them money. And then Paolo has, of course, the past history to Donald uh, with through the models and was the introducer uh, to Melania of, you know, I don't even know if Paolo was the guy that was responsible and maybe even in possession of the nude photos of Melania when she was a young model. Um, the name kind of, again, sounds very familiar. But my point is, where is our members of Congress? Why is it that you, Ben, and I are engaging in this conversation, how you have gone so deep down the rabbit hole to start investigating with what is currently available online just to try to put the pieces together. Isn't that really the job for our DOJ? Isn't it really the job for members of Congress on whether it's judiciary or oversight to start taking a look? Why not subpoena this guy and have him come in and testify before a committee to give an explanation as to what was going on, what he knew, and so on. You know, that's the problem. And it's the same thing. And I'm going to go right back to this whole um, dismissal by uh, the Second Circuit. Donald Trump routinely is getting away with accountability, responsibility, and, you know, and, um, and damages, right, that he's causing to other people. Yep. And this is just patently unfair. I mean, you would be locked up for life, as would anybody with anything that even remotely, remotely had anything to do with the things that you and I are talking about here on a regular basis. And everybody needs to be held accountable to the same standard. Do we or do we not, Ben, have one system of justice in this country? Or is there actually two? Those for the politicians of the wealthy, and then one for the rest of us suckers, because well, that's what it certainly appears to me. And here's the thing. The standard that President Biden and Democrats often have to live by is they have to be perfect, and they have to constantly deliver for the American people everything and be an A++. Plus plus. And that is the incentive structure. And if they don't meet that, or if there's one issue where people disagree with them, that's it. You're over. And then the media kind of pounces on them right there. The incentive structure for the Republicans, now the MAGA party, is how low can you go? And then they have to say things, well, we don't care about any of these things relating to Donald Trump and Jared Kushner or this or that. But when President Biden was not the president and not the vice president, he gave a $4,000 loan to his own son to buy a truck and his son repaid the loan and therefore election interference. Let's go after him for that. It is complete bogus and BS stuff when all these things about Donald Trump and about MAGA are staring us in the face, but we're not going to hold back. In 2024, if you thought we weren't holding back in 2023, our sleeves are rolled up and we are ready to go and just wait until what we do after this first ad break, because things are going to heat up right now. Let's take our first break. And now let's take a quick break to talk about our next partner, Roan. If you're like me, you understand the pains of finding out what to wear. Let's face it, most clothes are uncomfortable or too tight or never actually the size that you really are, and not to mention the annoyance of trying to put together a good outfit. And when you finally do have a good fit, you can only wear it for a few hours before you have an important meeting or dinner and then you have to change. Everyone wants to dress their best and look good at all times because frankly, it's a confidence booster. So here's the deal. Men's closets were due for a radical reinvention, and Roan stepped up to the challenge. Roan's commuter collection is the most comfortable, breathable, and flexible set of products known to man. And here's why. Roan helps you get ready for any occasion with the commuter collection, which offers the world's most comfortable pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, and polos. You never have to worry about what to wear when you have the Roan commuter collection. Roan's comfortable four-way stretch fabric provides breathability and flexibility that leaves you free to enjoy what life throws your way, from your commute to work to your 18 holes of golf. It's time to feel confident without the hassle. 
With Roan's wrinkle release technology, wrinkles disappear as you stretch and wear the products. It's that easy. With the Gold Fusion Anti-Odor technology, you'll be smelling fresh and clean all day long. And on top of that, Roan is 100% machine washable, so you can ditch the dry cleaner altogether. I absolutely love Roan. This has truly become my go-to commuter fit. We're on the move a lot, whether it's jumping from meeting to meeting or catching a flight or an important dinner. The Roan Commuter Collection has never let me down. The versatility and overall comfort of the collection is undefeated. And even after I wear it all day, I still feel super fresh because of that gold fusion anti-odor technology. The Commuter Collection can get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next. So right now, head to Roan.com slash Cohen, that's C-O-H-E-N, and use promo code Cohen to save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off your entire order when you head to R-H-O-N-E dot com slash Cohen, C-O-H-E-N, and use code Cohen. It's time to find your corner office. Ben Mycel is here. Did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets. Inspired by NASA, Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. Using silver infused fabrics originally inspired by NASA, NASA, Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long so you get better sleep every night. These sheets are infused with silver that prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. No more gross odors. And get this, Miracle Sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than bed sheets used by some five-star hotels. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. Go to trymiracle.com slash beat to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo, BEAT, at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash beat and use the code BEAT to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40%. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash beat to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. Welcome back. We are live here on Political Beatdown, and Donald Trump has still been found liable for civil rape. Yeah, I mean, I know there's a lot of news stories out there about Donald Trump, but a federal judge and a jury, a federal jury in Manhattan, found that Donald Trump engaged in the equivalent of rape. They found him liable for sexual abuse, and the judge wanted to make it very clear that that is substantially the same thing as rape. And if that is not a disqualifying fact, and I know we could get into deep analysis of all of these legal cases, but what a horrifying thing, and that needs to be said that simply, and it needs to be repeated because that was a finding made by a judge and a jury where Trump was given due process. I want to show this as well, because I think clips like this, Cohen, and I could only imagine for you too, you know, as, as you know, your, your daughter was around this guy at some point in time, you know, take a look at what Trump said. This is an old clip, but this is a clip that Trump said about, um, and, and, and again, to think about what your, your daughter went through with him, what women have gone through with him in, in general and been around him, like just 
just this individual is is so vile. Here's what he said about uh, Lindsay Lohan when he went on the uh, Howard Stern show. Just take a listen to this. What do you think of Lindsay Lohan now? I think she's hot. There's something there, right? Yes. Do you, you have to like freckles. I've seen a, a you know a close up of her chest. Yes. And a lot of freckles. Are you into freckles? If the father's a wreck, like the way he is. Right. You imagine the sex with this troubled... Yeah, you're probably right. She's probably deeply troubled and therefore great in bed. Back in the day... How come the deeply troubled women... Yes. You know, deeply, deeply troubled. Right. They're always the best in bed. If for some reason what I said is true, I mean, they're, they're just unbelievable. I can tell from the... You don't want to be with them for the long term, but for the short term, there's nothing. I mean, that's... I mean, it's, it's horrifying. Look, I happen to know Lindsay. And um, I can tell you that, yeah, she was deeply troubled. But for a grown man to be talking about... Now, I get Howard Stern. That's part of the shtick. And it's been his shtick since the 80s. And so while I find the conversation to be gross, and I would have shut it off or just changed stations, I find it beyond reprehensible that Donald who Howard has children the same, roughly the same age as Lindsay as well, which is why I find the whole thing reprehensible. But I just find the way Donald is going along with it, it reminds me so much of like the Billy Bush um, segment uh, about being able you know, to do whatever you want with a woman because you're a celebrity. It's Howard knew how to play Donald to create a really – um, crazy episode that was going to get a lot of attention. And he certainly did it. And Donald fell right into that trap. Gross. And, the whole thing and, is just and, gross. And, and by the way, just, you know, you, you mentioned the video of Access Hollywood where Trump says, when you grab women by their genitals, you can get away with it. And when you're a star, they just, they just let you do it. Donald Trump was deposed in connection with the E. Jean Carroll federal trial where Trump yep. was found liable for uh, rape in a civil context. Um, and he was shown his statements. And Trump said, yeah, that's true, unfortunately or fortunately. He says, or fortunately, that that is something that rich men get away with. He says, fortunately. Here, play this clip from Trump's deposition from the past year. Play this clip. And I'm going to ask you, is this the photo that you were just referring to? I think so, yes. Okay. And do you recall when you first saw this photo? At some point during the process, I saw it. That's, uh, I guess, her husband, John Johnson, who was an anchor for ABC. Nice guy, I thought. I mean, I don't know him, but I thought he was pretty good at what he did. Um, I don't even know who the woman. Let's see. I don't know who. It's Marla. You say Marla's in this photo? That's Marla, yeah. That's that's my wife. Which woman are you pointing to? No. That's Here. Carol. Oh, is that, the person oh, okay. you just pointed to was oh, Eugene Carroll. Who is that? Who is this? Point, your wife. And the person, the woman on the right is your then wife, I don't Ivana. know. This was... This has become very famous in this video. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. Just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything grab them by the pussy, you can do anything. That's what you said, correct? Well, historically, that's true with stars. It's true with stars that, that they can grab women by the pussy? Well, that's what it's, if you look over the last million years, I guess that's been largely true, not always, but largely true, unfortunately or fortunately. And you consider yourself uh, to be a star? I think you can say that, yeah. And. I, I can I can vomit from watching these the from watching these videos, listening to him try to rationalize stupidity, which is what Donald von Schitt's in pants continuously does. You know, he says something fucking stupid, and instead of controlling himself in advance, it's okay. I understand some sometimes you make mistakes. You then retract the mistake. And you explain why you made the mistake, but not him. You know, fortunately, unfortunately, yeah, I'm a star. Some would say so. Yeah, I am. You know, I mean, it's you could just vomit 
from the level of narcissism, from the level of stupidity that we as the, you know, as the intakers of this information of this daily chaos from him, why the Republican Party keeps permitting this to go forward. Again, I get it. There are people that will not vote Democrat. They've been Republicans their whole life. I respect everybody's right to pick and choose who you want to be the president of this amazing country. But Donald Trump, a guy who's already stated emphatically he intends on day one to rewrite the Constitution that is already putting out, they're preparing a hit list of people that they intend to incarcerate or to kill, right? I mean, this is acceptable conversation or commentary from a guy. You all have to wake up. This and is here's the thing, though, too. Constantly set to grow the platform. You know, we are right now, despite being number one, right, on uh, on the YouTube chat, it makes no difference. We need to have millions of people joining us each and every time. We need to be able to have a community that's so big that our voices cannot be ignored, that it must be acknowledged when Ben and I are sharing, not innuendo, but facts, real, honest, legitimate facts, not because Michael Cohen says so, not because Ben Mycel says so, not because uh, the media pundit on MSNBC, CNN, Fox, or Newsmax, or OAN, or wherever that they're saying it. No. This is coming from the horse's mouth, or I should say the fucking donkey's mouth. It's coming right out of the mouth of Donald Von Schitz and Pants when he's talking about all the things that he's going to do that are contrary to our democratic principles. And look, when Donald Trump says these things in the videos that I keep on playing, he is telling us who he is. He, he's saying these things intentionally. And in my view, he can't help himself, not because he's just saying these things and it's word salad. This is how he feels. And he's incapable of even recognizing because he's so putrid and disgusting and vile that what he is bragging about is sexual assault. What he's bragging about is abuse. And this is just the way he's been. And the way he's been has been abhorrent vile and disgusting his entire life. You know, look, I, I I have to, you know, prepare every three years or so this continuing legal education requirement as 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 a lawyer, and you have to pass a moral character uh, exam. When it comes to Donald Trump, when you're becoming, getting the access to the nuclear codes, when you're saying things like this, in the past, there would be disqualifying things if someone said like woohoo the wrong way or or spelled potato incorrectly and now you have a republican party who who promotes someone who says the things that we're sharing with you right here and you know and and here's the thing too cuz you know these Epstein logs are going to be released um uh, soon as well but Trump's names already appeared on them and for their obsession the MAGA Republicans there's like so many photos of Trump like with him you know Trump's name is on the logs repeatedly seven different times Donald Trump's on the plane with him um yeah, but he and, barely but he barely he knew him. He barely knew him. He didn't really care for him. He didn't really like him. But, you know, he did make the comments that, you know, he liked, meaning Epstein liked the young girls, uh, you know, even more than he did. And then and then when Donald Trump was asked the question about Ghislaine Maxwell, when Trump was disgracing the the Oval Office, his response to it was to wish her well and hope that she does does good here watch this do you remember this from this press conference oh i do um just lane maxwell is in prison and so a lot of people want to know if she's going to turn in powerful people and i know you've talked in the past about prince andrew and uh, you've criticized bill clinton's behavior i'm wondering uh, do you feel that she's going to turn in powerful men how do you see that working out I don't know. I haven't really been following it too much. I just wish her well, frankly. Uh, I've met her numerous times over the years, especially since I lived in Palm Beach. And I guess they lived in Palm Beach. Uh, but I wish her well, whatever it is. Uh, I don't know the situation with Prince Andrew. Just don't know. Not aware of it. 
They're horrifying. And then let me show you this one, though, Cohen, because this was recent, the one I'm about to show you. This is what Donald Trump was saying in front of the young Republicans at Cipriani's in New York. Nothing says man of the people than meeting with the young MAGA Republicans at, at Cipriani's. And this is a story that Donald Trump tells the, the young Republicans. And he talks about how a general, and by the way, this, this is in the past month when Donald Trump did this. He said that a general went to him and said, sir, you did the bravest act, sir, that I've ever seen as a general. And I've seen some of the biggest acts of bravery on the battlefield. But sir, Donald Trump, your bravery in this act was something like I've never seen before. Watch what Donald Trump brags about here from last month. Play this clip. But I went onto that stage just a few days later and a general who's a fantastic general actually said to me, sir, I've been on the battlefield. Men have gone down on my left and on my right. I stood on hills where soldiers were killed. But I believe the bravest thing I've ever seen was the night you went onto that stage with Hillary Clinton after what happened. And then that woman asked you the first question about it. And I said, locker room talk. It's locker room talk. What the hell? What are you talking? Locker room talk. <laughs> that was not a great... It's, he's he's supposed to, it's a fucking lie, right? If he knew that if he wasn't lying, he would have mentioned who the general was. And if you ask him who the general is, uh, he obviously said, you know what? I don't want to mention the guy's name because, right, uh, because how many of our generals right now is he talking about that saw battle that stood up on the hill? He's thinking of Iwo Jima. That's really what he's thinking. He's so, he's so incredibly stupid. It's scary. But, you know, as we sort of come to the end of, you know, the, of the program, you know, got to do the two finger salute in 2024. And actually the two finger salute, Ben, and I think you'll appreciate this, goes to every one of these fucking jerk offs that showed up at mar a at a thousand bucks a head in order to sit there and smell up, you know, and take in the stench of Donald Von Schitt's and pants to the musical genius of Vanilla Ice. Fuck you all for supporting this jerk off and a half who is adamant about destroying our democracy. Fuck you all. Well said, Michael Cohen. Do want to mention that the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals has issued a directive that the parties be prepared to hear oral argument or, or during oral argument to discuss the amicus briefs that were filed, one by a group called American Oversight, saying that there's no jurisdiction to hear Donald Trump's appeal on the issue of absolute presidential immunity in the first place, that the order by Judge Tanya Chutkin denying Donald Trump's motion to dismiss the indictment on absolute presidential immunity grounds does not constitute what's called a collateral order. Therefore, an interlocutory appeal or an appeal before a conviction occurs is premature, and and therefore, D.C. Circuit send it right back to Judge Tanya Chutkin for trial. I think that is big because there's a doctrine in the law called constitutional avoidance and where the Supreme Court or a court of appeals doesn't have to even address a constitutional issue yet and can let it play out. Sometimes they'll find those issues. And uh, the uh, decision based uh, that this is all based on is it called Midland Asphalt from 1989 by the late Justice Scalia, a far right wing uh, so-called conservative uh, jurist um, who basically was the one who, who wrote this opinion that uh, American oversight uh, cites to as the reason why the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals should just dismiss this appeal outright. Uh, another uh, amicus brief was submitted by top Republican lawyers from five former presidential administrations um, going all the way back to Nixon. Uh, and it was a very persuasive brief as well. Judge Ludding was one of the people who submitted that. I did a whole hot take on the import of that, and the parties are going to have to address those issues. Here's what I want to address also heading into uh, 2024. We're doing our best here to build this channel, to build this show. We don't have outside investors here on the Midas Touch Network or on Political Beatdown. So, one of the ways we build this uh, show 
um, and get you the research and, and the graphics packages and everything that you see here um, is through our Patreon. It's right there on the bottom of our uh, YouTube. It's in the description as well. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash political beatdown. Once again, patreon.com slash political beatdown. We do exclusive podcasts of political beatdown. We do them as an after show uh, on patreon.com slash political beatdown. We'll be doing one right after this show. So check that out. Also, once a month, Michael Cohen and I hold an exclusive Zoom meeting with our patrons who are members of patreon.com slash political beatdown. And throughout the month, Michael Cohen is doing his best to respond to direct messages and to post updates about his life. And so it's also a good way to engage directly with Michael Cohen if that's something you ever wanted to do. And the fact that you're here tells me that is something that you want to do. No pressure if you can't do it. The best thing you can do to help is just share these videos, share the Midas Touch Network, share Political Beatdown, subscribe on audio to Political Beatdown, subscribe on audio to the blue Mea culpa, mea culpa blue, not the red. Subscribe to the mea culpa blue. That's Michael Cohen's other uh, podcast right here on the Midas Touch Network. So that's the best way you can help, and that's free. But if you are able to help financially support the show, patreon.com slash political beatdown is a good way to do that as we head into 2024. So thank you so much, Beatdown Brigaders. Cohen and I will now be recording our after show. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Shout out to the Midas Mighty.